It is the News Blitz with Randy Wang on Talk Radio 790 KABC. We're here every single day from 5 to 6 talking about the local issues that matter to you most and taking your phone calls at 800-222-KABC. 1-800-222-5222. You can email me as well about anything and everything. I read and respond to every email I get at randykabc at gmail.com. That's randykabc at gmail.com. Well, we are gearing up for election season just a little over two months away from November 5th, the big day where everyone will hopefully have their ballots in. You'll have a whole month to be voting. And while a lot of attention is going to be paid on the presidential election and the big nationwide races, it's the local down ballot races that have the biggest impact on your life, on your pocketbook and on your family. So we're going to do our part and try to get to know some of the people that are on the ballot in some of those local races because the local issues that happen right here in Los Angeles will affect your life a lot more than whatever is going on in D.C. Today, we start that by talking to a candidate for LAUSD School Board District 3. His name is Dan Chang. You can see his website at changforchange.org. Very catchy. Let's go to Dan Chang. Welcome to the News Blitz. Randy, thank you for having me. Excited to be here. So, Dan, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to the audience. Uh, tell us about uh, who you are and uh, why you decided to become a teacher. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. So I am a public school teacher. I teach middle school math, pre-algebra and algebra at Madison Middle School in North Hollywood. And literally teaching in um, teaching is my lifelong dream. When I was in middle school, I, I, this is a true story. I watched Stand and Deliver, and I said, I want to be just like Jaime Escalante. And it took me 30 years of my life to get there. So I, you know, worked and opened a bunch of charter schools in high need parts of Los Angeles. I actually worked in the private sector in banking and technology for a while. And, uh, but all along, um, you know, the classroom was calling me. It was, it was really that thing that had, mo- you know, just that motivated me to get involved with education in the first place. And I am just very fortunate that, you know, seven years ago at the ripe old age of 42, uh, I was able to become a rookie LA unified math teacher. Uh, so been in the classroom ever since then. And honestly, it's, um, it is a joy. Uh, I love it. And, um, you know, I, I count my blessings every day that I can do it. Well, and as someone who's taught at LAUSD for the last seven years, which includes some really tumultuous years, including COVID, I got to imagine, you know, on the ground level, some of the issues that teachers are facing in this district. Uh, What are some of your biggest challenges as a middle school math teacher? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, you know, COVID learning loss and just the fact that a lot of the students we work uh, we work with are working class kids just trying to, to do their thing. But you know, my average student probably comes in about two and a half grade levels behind in terms of math. So there's a lot of work to do. You know, the further up you are, whether you're a high school teacher or middle school teacher, you have a lot of work to get students uh, up to grade level. So that's one. Uh, I think some of the other issues that we're seeing, first and foremost, student safety, right? Like students are feeling a lot less safe in our campuses these days. And you can connect that right back to the issues that you see in our city at large in terms of public safety. Um, And then the other big thing that I see as a classroom teacher is the downtown district bureaucracy is literally choking the life out of school sites and literally taking all of the money away from our schools, sometimes illegally and siphoning it back to the central office downtown. So I got to imagine that's one of the reasons why you're deciding to infiltrate that bureaucracy and you want to be a part of the school board to fix it. Yeah, 100 percent. I love everything I do inside the classroom, everything outside the four walls of the class, you know, honestly can be a little demoralizing. And I really don't want to sit here and say that I didn't at least attempt to try and make things better for students and teachers and schools. So that's why I stepped out and decided to run. And, you know, like, like you said, there's a lot going on downtown that most, you know, even principals don't always know about. And, um, you know, the, the arts funding that LA Unified took from their local schools, I talked to principals and they didn't even know what happened. Um, so 
we've got to fix downtown. We've got to get more money back to our, to our local schools here in the Valley. Um, and we can do that by cutting the bureaucracy downtown. We're speaking with Dan Chang. His website is changforchange.org. He's running for L.A. County School Board in District 3, which is a lot of parts of the San Fernando Valley. Can we expand on for a second what you just talked about with uh, arts and music funding? So, you know, I'm someone who benefited greatly from music programs. I took seven years of clarinet. I was in marching band. I remember a few years ago we passed Prop 28, which was supposed to guarantee more funding for these programs on top of the funding that's already there. But you been exposing what LAUSD actually did after Prop 28. Yeah, absolutely. So as you said, all of us voters, we approved uh, Prop 28 to give fund additional funding, new funding to schools. Last year was the first year that new funding was supposed to take effect. And in LA Unified, for all of their elementary schools, they cut the initial funding. They, they, they basically cut the funding that they had at the school and replaced it with the Prop 28, which is illegal. Like Prop 28 was written so that uh, school districts couldn't pull a fast one on their schools. They couldn't say, oh, here's some new funding and take away the old funding and replace, uh, uh, replace what was there. Like Prop 28 is new additive funding. It means more arts teachers on, campus, on campuses so last year, if you were in an elementary school in LA Unified, you should have had something like double the number of arts teachers on campus or number double the number of days of instruction in arts by a certified arts teacher. And that did not happen at practically every elementary school in LA Unified because, because the district, the central office, took away the existing money. Um, and there's actually a legal term for it. And it's written into the law. It's called supplanting. So LA Unified did the one thing that you can't do. You can't supplant or replace your existing funding with the Prop 28. That happened at almost every single elementary school in LA Unified. It's a $30 million take from school sites back to the central office. And the evidence is just 100% there out in the public now. And um, really, the next move is on the school board and sorry, the superintendent, uh, you know, my opponent in this race, they got to step up and do the right thing and make make elementary schools whole. Um, and even if they give the money back to schools, it doesn't erase the fact that students in schools lost a year of, you know, arts instruction. You know, you'll never get that back. That that's one of those things that can completely change the trajectory of a young kid's life. You know, they, they might not be interested in what's going on in school, but that gets them interested. That gets them focused. That gets them excited about going to school. So, yeah, that kind of harm is a big deal. Yeah, 100 percent. You know, it's uh, school's got to be fun. There's got to be joy, especially at the elementary school level. You've got this energy like you can get it out in music. You can get it out in dance. I can't tell you how many of my students are always doodling and drawing and, you know, just trying to express themselves. And, um, you know, we had an opportunity last year to give kids more, to give them essentially double. And we did it. And again, I, I bring this back to the, the district central office um, and principals didn't even know about it. You know, they like a lot of principals just didn't have um, didn't know that this happened because the district just completely fumbled the rollout. So, um, you know, it is something that I'm fighting for. There are a lot of people out there who have been fighting this fight as well. Uh, the former superintendent of LA Unified, Austin Butner, is front and center on this. Uh, a bunch of the labor groups in Los Angeles Unified, from the teachers union to the classified union, is out front on this. And there are a lot of parents who were the ones who figured this out, right? Parents at local elementary schools, um, they were the ones that were just first sniffing this out. They're like, hey, wait, we were supposed to get, we helped pass, pass Prop 28. We voted for this. Where are the extra arts teachers for my, for my child, for my son, for my daughter? They weren't seeing it happen last year. Um, and it's those parents, a woman named Audrey Wachopi, who actually first kicked this off and, and really – um, got people looking into this. And so I'm doing my part to bring, uh, to bring more visibility, visibility to it. 
uh, and, and throwing my two cents into the ring. But um, it's something that really um, it's out there now and it's incumbent on the district and my opponent in this race uh, and the school board to step up and do the right thing now. We're talking to Dan Chang. You can check out his website, chang4change.org. That's chang, the number four, change.org. He is running for LAUSD school board in District 3, which is a lot of parts of the San Fernando Valley where I reside. I've been getting a couple of your mailers, Dan. And as soon as I saw your picture, I recognized you because I saw that report that you were featured on with KCAL at the end of the school year at the in the middle of this year in May where yeah. there was a little attendance fraud going on with LAUSD. Can you explain what exactly was going on with there where there was a day after graduation where the LAUSD board wanted everyone to count everyone as present when no one was at school? Yeah. I mean, it's exactly what you said. We have a hunt, you know, Friday was the last day of school. I'm an eighth grade teacher. My eighth graders actually did their culmination ceremony on Thursday so Friday, I'm in my class staring, you know, cleaning up my room because there's not a single student there, just a lot of empty chairs. Uh, and I was told to mark all my students present. And that is textbook attendance fraud. Um, and I'm not the only one that had to do that. And, you know, when I fill out my attendance every day, I get a little pop up message on my screen. It says you teacher hereby certify the attendance you are submitting is true and correct. And it really upset me that um, someone asked me, you know, asked me to lie on the job, right? It's my butt that has to fill out that form and check that box. Uh, so that's what happened in my school. It's about a, it was about a $50,000 problem just at Madison um, two, uh, uh, two school years ago. And, you know, I asked the district to investigate it. They didn't investigate it. The state superintendent of public instruction said and promised that he would investigate further. He did not. And so everybody up the chain from me to my principal, to the local district bureaucracy, to the central office of LA Unified, all the way up to the state of Sacramento. No one really took it seriously. No one looked into it further. Um, and they told me the investigation was closed and nothing is gonna come of it. Um, but I did my own investigation. I submitted a Public Act Records Act request for just a small set of schools in LA Unified. And lo and behold, I got some more information back and um, there's more. I'm not, mine is not the only school. Um, it could be as widespread as one in every eight schools in LA Unified that has a problem like this. So this story is just, um, this story is, is not, it, it's just starting. There's more and people all up the chain uh, refuse to investigate it. And so we're continuing to pursue it ourselves and we've got the information, we've got the evidence. Well, it sure seems like if you get elected to the LAUSD school board, one of the things you're going to be championing is transparency on where all that money goes. The LAUSD mm -hmm. budget is as big as the budget of the city of Los Angeles. Yes, that is right. And oversight and fiscal responsibility is could be the most important job of any school board member, 100%. And I'll just say that there's not a single person on the school board right now in LA Unified that has a budget or finance background. Not a single person. And that's something that I bring. I've, I've worked in the private sector. I've done, uh, I was my first job out of college. I was a financial analyst uh, at a bank for two years. So you know, I went to the Anderson School at UCLA and got an MBA in business administration. So budgets and finance uh, is my thing. I figured out the district's budgets. And so, um, you know, LA Unified needs someone with my skill set at a minimum on that board. Uh, there's only seven people on the school board. And that is, a, you know, a skill and a level of expertise that is sorely needed that I definitely bring. 
Well, and I think we need that kind of experience considering in years past some of the scandals that LAUSD has had to deal with, whether it was the payroll system that made no sense that wasn't working properly or seven or eight years ago when we were going to buy iPads for everybody, but it was going to be a yeah. specific vendor and we needed to pay a whole bunch of money to invent a new software program, even though there were free software programs available. There has been a mm-hmm. lot of waste, fraud and abuse at the LAUSD. That's it, Randy. You've got you've um, you've seen it over the years, and it's a pattern that just keeps repeating itself. And unless we have new leadership with different experiences um, at the top of LA Unified, we're going to get the same results. So we need to make a change, and that is the theme of my campaign. We're speaking with Dan Chang. He's running for LAUSD School Board. You can go to his website, Chang, the number four change.org. Now, Dan, let's go through some of the more consequential decisions that the board has had to vote on in the last couple of years in response mm-hmm. to the, uh, the riots that were going on in 2020 and pressure from UTLA as well as other groups. The LAUSD School Board voted to defund the LAUSD police, remove police officers from schools. There are some parents groups out there that would like the LAUSD to reverse that decision, considering some of the violence that we see on campuses, even here in the Valley. Uh, What do you stand on that issue? Yeah, I'm with the parents. I'm a parent myself. You know, I my son is um, at an LA, you know, my local middle LA Unified Middle School, and um, and it's not just the parents who want it; it is students. So, if you look at LA Unified's own survey data, the percentage of students who say they feel unsafe on an LA Unified campus has doubled in the last two years. So, students are screaming out for it. And um, again, all of the news that you hear. You know, there's a, just a straight through line from the public safety issues we have as a city, and it goes straight to our schools. Um, so I am for bringing that police uh, school security officers back uh, onto campus. And that's one of the major points of contention between me and my opponent in this race. My opponent in this race, um, he voted to cut the school police funding by 25, uh, by $25 million. And so here we are. Students are saying they feel unsafe. Principals um, are telling me that their schools are being victimized and burglarized and petty crimes and vandalism are happening from outside elements. So I 100 support it. I 100 percent support having uh, school resource officers, school police officers being able to patrol uh, our schools and provide that safety that our students need. And, you know, there's just been any number of egregious incidents that have happened in the last year uh, at schools in the Valley. You know, the most violent things that you could think of that could happen, uh, they're happening in our schools and it's got to come to an end. And of course, as a middle school math teacher, I got to imagine you have an opinion on what's the latest thing being debated, not just at LAUSD, but statewide. What's your take on cell phones in the classroom? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, like I come at this from a lot of angles. One is just a, as a parent with uh, three kids who are school aged and many cell phones uh, at the dinner table and just, you know, how hard is it for us as parents just to get our, our, our own children to look us in the eye and put their device down and have a conversation, right? So, um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of it. I really am on so many levels. One, just as a classroom teacher, you know, the, there's no need for a device to be ringing and notifying and distracting our kids in class. Um, and so I, I, I really see this as a strong stand to give our students and our children back, you know, six hours of their life where they can focus on the real things, you know, really like developing relationships with each other, you know, having fun, you know, being able to sit in a space with a person, another person, a peer, have a conversation, build a relationship, and do it without an electronic device tethered to them. So I'm a huge, um, huge fan of it. It works in the classroom. It's going to be better for my kids at home, uh, and it's going to be better for our schools. And I, I do really, truly believe students at the end of the day will come out feeling happier and healthier because they are not tied to their devices during the school day. Um, and once again, I mean, I'll just say that's just another point of contention between myself and my opponent in this race. 
Um, he is just, you know, I'll just say he's, he's kind of out of touch with what parents go through and what teachers are going through on a daily basis. And so he actually is against the, the cell phone free policy at schools. So I'm for it. He's not. Really, that one seemed like kind of a layup. Who would be against this policy? How, how much of your instruction time do you think would, is dedicated toward having to be the phone police in your classroom? Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, like, for me, like none, right? Because my classroom, we have rules up front. They're, you know, reinforced by me as the teacher. And we do a lot of work and we have fun together. So it's my, I don't have a problem with cell phones. And it's not a big deal at all in my classroom. I know it's, you know, not the same for everybody. But once you set up a culture and you set the expectations, students buy in. And so it hasn't been a problem for me um, at all. And I don't think it should wow, be a that's problem impressive. for school to implement. Yeah. I mean, most, you know, a lot of teachers, like most students and kids are, if you set up the environment, if you get them to buy in, they, they, they actually tend to, they won't admit this to you, but the structure helps. All right, Dan Chang, I'm going to give you a minute here. Make your pitch to the voters. Why should the residents of Los Angeles and LUSD District 3 send you to the school board? I appreciate it. Thank you. So I'm a teacher. I'm an LA Unified parent. I'm an education leader. I've got a 20-year track record of improving public schools in LA, and we need a change. This bureaucracy in downtown has taken money away from our local schools. They are sending us mandates that are just squeezing the life out of teachers and students at local school sites. We need to make our schools safe. We need to cut the bureaucracy and get more money back to our local schools. And we can't do that unless there is new leadership at the top of LA Unified, people with fresh ideas and new perspective. Um, you know, Albert Einstein said it the best. If the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. And we can't do that to our kids anymore. We can't do that to our teachers and staff. Our city deserves better, so it's time for a change. And I'm hoping that everybody out there, if you're hearing this, uh, please look me up. Dan Chang, public school teacher, www.chang, C-H-A-N-G, the number four, change.org.org. I appreciate your time. Hey, you did that in 60 seconds. Perfect. Dan Chang running for LEUSD School Board in District 3. His website, Chang, the number four, change.org. Dan Chang, thank you so much for coming on. I'm sure we'll talk to you soon before the election. Thank you, Randy. Really appreciate it and um, hope to do this again. Thank you so much. There we go. That's Dan Chang, everybody. 800-222-KABC is the phone number if you'd like to react to what you just heard from the candidate running for school board. It's the News Blitz with Randy Wang on Talk Radio 790 KABC. It's the News Blitz with Randy Wang on KABC. I want to thank Dan Chang for coming on the show, telling us why he wants to run for LEOSC school board. I'm going to tell you right now, I am interested in interviewing local candidates for every office, including the races that get no attention, like the other 88 cities in Los Angeles County, Orange County races. If there's a candidate that you think should be on the show, give me a pitch. Tell me who, tell me why. RandyKABC at gmail.com. That's RandyKABC at gmail.com. 790KABC welcomes Joni Mitchell, the Asylum Albums from 1976 to 1980. The four CD set is out now with newly remastered versions and liner notes by Meryl Streep. Right now, caller number nine at one 888 gets a four CD set of Joni Mitchell, the Asylum Albums, and qualifies for the six LP box set. This prize is furnished by Rhino.com. Good luck dialing. It's the News Blitz with Randy Wang on KABC. It is the News Blitz with Randy Wang on Talk Radio 790 KABC. We're here every single day from 5 to 6 talking about the local issues that matter to you most and taking your phone calls at 800-222-KABC, 1-800-222-5222. Your emails as well. I read and respond to every one at randykabc at gmail.com. That's randykabc at gmail.com. You know, I've been in kind of a funk for the last 24 hours. Well, about 20 hours. Because, as you know, I do a lot of cooking at home. 
and I really enjoy it. It is my therapy. It uh, brings me a lot of joy. Plus, I get to eat everything that I made. So there's that. But last night, I had a rare but pronounced cooking fail. So I had a whole bunch of leftover ingredients to do veggie skewers. We did that with my parents over the weekend with shrimp. It was great. And I figured, okay, I'll do skewers again. And what haven't I not had in a while to be good on the grill? Oh, I know. I haven't done any bone-in chicken in quite some time. And bone-in chicken, I really love to do on the grill. It takes a long time to do it right. But if you've got the time, you got the energy, you know, put a little oil, put your favorite seasonings on. I was using a Southern Spanish uh, pinchon seasoning that I had. And you have to on low and slow, on your grill, over fire, go for about 35 minutes flipping every five minutes. It is a process. So I went to the grocery store over the weekend, and I got a package that was two breasts, two thighs, two wings, and two legs, and I seasoned everything, turned on my eight-year-old grill that is definitely on its last legs. It's got three burners and the left burner does not ignite all the time. You have to really kind of just keep hitting the pilot, hitting the pilot, hitting the pilot. And it's, it's an old grill. The, you know, the bottom of it is really difficult to clean. So most of the time I just don't bother. Probably a mistake. Anyway, I've got everything on there. I've got it going on low and slow. I probably oiled the chicken a little too much. I go back into the kitchen and I figure, oh, well, I'll check it every five minutes and I'll do the flipping, but I got to go organize and put together these skewers. And what happens? Oh, as I'm assembling the skewers, I look out into the backyard and I see a plume of smoke because my eight-year-old charbroil $150 grill that was a gift from a friend caught fire. Oh, and this was a bad one. You know, sometimes it catches a little fire and you could try to blow it out, but that doesn't work. Sometimes you got to throw a little cup of water on it. That puts it out. No, 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 no. I had to put aside all the chicken that I could and I needed to pull out my watering can that I used to water my plants and I needed to use that to put out the fire. It was bad. And once the smoke had settled, once the flames had died down to just the flames that were on the burners in the grill... The breasts had survived, miraculously, but the legs, the thighs, and the wings, they got real tiny, and they got real charred, and they got real black. So, this is my way of saying, I'm in the market for a new grill. (laughs) I've had that grill for a long time. I know it's time to upgrade. It's done me well. It was great to have for the years that I've used it, and I've used it a lot. It's a propane grill, and I'm ready to upgrade. I do have my Traeger, but that's a smoker. And while the Traeger smoker can go at high temperatures, it's not over a direct flame, so it's a little different of a cook. And let me just tell you, I experimented once with my Traeger of trying to actually cook at like 500 degrees, so I was smoking a tri-tip, right? And when you smoke a tri-tip, you go salt and pepper real heavy, 225 degrees until it gets to about that 120, 125 range. Then you're supposed to sear it over a high, high heat, preferably an open flame for like four minutes on each side. That way you've got that char on the outside that you know you want. So what did I do? (laughs) I'm like, okay, I could either put on a cast iron and throw it over there real quick. Or I could turn on my grill next there, but I don't want to use two different grills in the same day. So I decided to pull off the tri-tip, turn the Traeger's temperature from 225 to 500 degrees, and I got an error. (laughs) It started going to a point where the flame box, there was so much fire in there that it kept rising and rising and rising, and it wouldn't turn off. I had to unplug the whole thing. It was wild. Like, it went from 500, 500, almost to 600 degrees. So since then, I only use the Traeger for smoking, for low cooking. I mean, I'll let it go up to 350 if I'm trying to crisp up some chicken skin. But, uh, yeah, the Traeger is for smoking. What I need is a new grill for grilling, and this is where you can help me out. Whether you want to give me a call at 800-222-KABC, 1-800-222, or 
or send me an email at randykabc at gmail.com. That's randykabc at gmail.com. Simple. I'm in the market for a new grill. If there's a brand you really like, if there's a kind of grill that you really like and you recommend, let me know because I'm about to do some shopping. 800-222-KABC or email me at randykabc at gmail.com. Tell me your the kind of grill that you love that you think I should get. It's the new splits with Randy Wang on KABC. KABC, let's go to Sean in Hermosa Beach. Sean, hello. Hey, Randy. I have to highly recommend the Camp Chef. And the reason is you get the best of whatever world you want, Randy, because it's a pellet. And its main and its main cooking area, but it has this really cool sidecar capability where you can hook up a pizza oven. You and it's an accessory that they sell, uh, or a grill, or uh, or a gas grill. So you can do all those things at any given time. So you can smoke something and then finish it uh, on a on a very high temperature grill. So, or you can cook a pizza, you know, all these different things. So I, I really think it's awesome. And the app is really good to monitor what's going on when you're away from the grill. Wow. Camp Chef. I'm looking at the website right now. I love all the little accessories. And yeah, you can kind of do like a three in one thing. And then I'm also looking at their flat top grills because lately I've become obsessed with smash burgers and I just don't have anything that I can really do a smash burger on in massive quantities. Cause you can only really do like two on a cast iron pan. This stuff looks great. I'm definitely well, going to check out camp chef. Yeah. Check out. And you can get a griddle with that sidecar feature that will accomplish that in a, you know, in a smaller area. So you don't have to get the full separate uh, flat top if, if you don't want to. Well, that's great. I'm going to check it all out. Thanks so much for the recommendation, Sean. You bet. man. Camp Chef. All right. I'm going to give it a look as I am in the market for a new grill. It's the News Blitz with Randy Wang on KABC. It's the News Blitz with Randy Wang on KABC. If you'd like to email me, you can do so at randykabc at gmail.com. That's randykabc at gmail.com. Mark writes in at randykabc at gmail.com. The best grills are old used Weber grills or Duquesne old used ones. Happy grilling. I will have to definitely look into that. I, I've seen some Webers at uh, Home Depot that are real, real nice. Although, I I don't know. Maybe there's a specific grill store I should be looking at. So I got to look at Webers. I got to look at Camp Chef. And Maisa writes in at randykabc at gmail.com. She says, hey, Randy, I watch barbecue enthusiast Stephen Reichlin's shows. Here's a list of his grill suggestions at a website called barbecuebible.com. So I'm going to look at that. I got, you know, this is a big purchase. This is an important moment in my life, upgrading the grill. So I'm going to be doing some research. I am going to be making sure that I get something that's going to last for a really long time. I'm going to really take care of this one. And, uh, you know, at some point, I'd like to really redo the backyard, and I don't want to just, you know, get a grill, but I would like to have a place for it. I love backyards that have, like, a designated barbecue island, maybe something made out of brick that's just like, this is your space, this is where you do the grilling. Oh, that would be wonderful. Right now, it's just kind of like, you know, under the patio cover uh, next to the air conditioner. My backyard's a little cluttered. Some of it's nice. You know, we get the patio furniture and we've got uh, our new trees and, uh, you know, it's nice to sit out there. But I love to have a designated area like here's where the grilling happens. Here's where the smoking happens. Because, you know, I do a lot of smoking and I'd like to do more grilling. I got to tell you right now, the fact that the old dirty grill that I have doesn't light properly has me really hesitant to use it all the time. But it still does a good job. I am ready to move on, though. So thanks, all, everyone, for those suggestions. I'm going to do my research, look at Weber's, definitely look at this barbecue Bible, and I've been staring at this website for Camp Chef for the last 10 minutes since we got that call from Sean. Looks great. And uh, I will, of course, report back to you because, well, you'll see the pictures on my social media. That's all I do is post pictures of food, occasionally pictures of the animals, but mostly just pictures of food. 
Hey, thank you all so much for being a part of this show. I'm so glad that you were able to tune in and hopefully you learned something today with uh, our candidate for LAUSD school board, Dan Chang. Look, I'm not specifically endorsing anybody in any race. This is technically a news program, but I'm always happy to interview candidates, uh, you know, on, on a lot of these local races that aren't getting any attention. So here's my pitch to you. If you know somebody who's running for a local office, get in touch with me. Maybe we'll try to schedule an interview. We got two months to go and there are so many local important races that nobody even knows about. So if uh, you want to pitch somebody that can do an interview on this show for something they're running for in L.A. County, in Orange County, in San Bernardino County, Ventura County, Riverside County, you can email me at randykabc at gmail.com. That's randykabc at gmail.com. If you ever miss an episode of this show, go to kabc.com slash newsblitz or go to the Apple Podcast app, search for KABC News Blitz, hit follow, hit subscribe. You can download all the episodes, leave a review, share it with your friends, or more people can tune into this show i'll see you tomorrow for another news blitz with randy wang on kabc